Welcome to part of our CES 2022 coverage. We'll be making short videos like this throughout CES to keep you up to date on the latest developments. Hit subscribe and the notification bell to make sure you see the moment we post a video. Like most outlets, we're covering CES virtually this year, which means that we spent a chunk of change on getting ready to go, and then on not going. So, if you'd like to support the channel, check out our Patreon and other links below. The start of Sony's presentation was unusual. Unlike most corporations which have only commented on the pandemic in passing, usually in the form of some remark about the size of the in-person audience, Sony talked at length about its work and on the effects on its workforce during the pandemic. Then it moved on to discussing its social and community actions throughout the past year. This being pretty unusual for a large corporation, I joked to Winter that perhaps this is what it always does, and once we got to the meat of the matter, Sony's media and gaming empire, things got much more normal. But perhaps it speaks instead to Sony's attempt to embody its founding principles, designing and creating innovative products which benefit people. But then, at the end of the press conference, just as in 2020, it dropped in perhaps the biggest automotive news to come out of yesterday's CES presentations. News that was also hotly anticipated. Back in 2020, we were one of the few organisations to experience the Vision S concept at CES. Unfortunately, we did so at a moment when one of our mics decided to take an unannounced vacation. But during that tour, it became rapidly apparent that the design was far more advanced than many prototypes from other companies notionally expecting to produce a car. It was clear then that Sony had used the relationships it had with tier one part suppliers to allow it to build what appeared to be an incredibly competent car, ostensibly as a technology demonstrator. A, here's what you can do with our technology vehicle. Following its CES debut, the enthusiasm for the Vision S remained high, and despite its initial statements that it did not intend to produce or build the car, eventually Sony posted videos of the car undergoing road tests in Europe. Videos of production and development appeared on the Sony website. While Sony continued to maintain that it did not, at least at that point, intend to build the Vision S, it spurred near constant rumours that Sony was planning a longer term project to build an EV. But it turns out that Sony is not planning to build an EV. It's considering building two. While the press conference was not so much light on information as completely devoid of it, at least beyond Sony's intention to establish Sony Mobility Inc, a Sony company that will explore the launch of the Vision S EVs, oh, and obviously that Sony will use its experience in manufacturing, AI and robotics to insist in that process. Sony showed off the new Vision S02 prototype alongside the Vision S01 prototype. Note that both vehicles are now prototypes, not concepts. Since that press conference, Sony have released a bit more information, and since the Vision S range is based on the Vision S skateboard style platform, that's designed to support multiple different types of vehicle, from MPVs through to the original coupe. And since both the S01 and S02 share these underpinnings, we can extrapolate that they will likely enter production with specs that aren't wildly different to each other. Unlike the Vision S01 coupe, the Vision S02 is described as an SUV, and as it stands it offers the kind of space that you only get with a dedicated EV platform and includes three row seating for seven. A brief mention was given to the 40 sensors and the foundational model of safety, adaptability and entertainment, but little else was given away. Since then, however, Sony have updated the website and at the moment it's saying that they share dual front and rear 200 kilowatt, that's 270-ish horsepower motors, providing four wheel drive and the S02 promises a top speed in excess of 112 miles per hour. Riding on double wishbone air suspension with a wheelbase of just over 3 meters, that's 119 imperial inches, in a vehicle which is just shy of 4.9 meters long, or again 193 inches. Sony has remained tight-lipped about the battery capacity and charging capabilities of this car, but I'd be surprised if it didn't include 800 volt, 200 plus kilowatt charging at this point in time, uh, most likely with a sub 30 minutes, 10 to 80% charge time. 
Those aforementioned 40 sensors include LiDAR, ultrasonic radar and, unsurprisingly, cameras, which allow for autonomous parking, lane change assistance and all the driver assistance gubbins that you've come to expect in this sort of vehicle. As shown at the moment, the vehicle also has rear vision cameras in place of mirrors, a feature that will require some legislative shift in the US to reach market. But given that Sony is just exploring production at the moment, it has time for that shift to occur. Sony's prototype in-car driver monitoring system monitors the driver's state, which is auto-speak for fatigue and attention monitoring, and interestingly adds lip reading functionality to improve voice recognition. Obviously being Sony, it leaned heavily into the in-car experience and entertainment. That's one of the three pillars of the platform's development, and Sony indicate that features and functions will be OTA updatable with 360 degree audio, Bravia technology for video and 5G cloud connected gaming. All in all, Sony has done its groundwork to produce an incredibly competent prototype. As we've seen elsewhere, the bar for entry to building an EV is much lower than for traditional ICE vehicles, and we're seeing a host of new entrants to the automotive industry, particularly from the Asia Pacific region, where the knowledge gained in the electronics industry can be utilized in EV production. Managing that shift to automotive production is a huge challenge, but Sony looks to be taking its time to make sure that it gets this right, and this is one future vehicle that we'll be keeping a close eye on. That's it for this update. Keep that notification bell tapped to keep up to date with our CES coverage, because we'll be back with more soon. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below, or in our free to join Discord chat room. There's a link below. If you haven't already, make sure you've subscribed to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolve Take 2, for longer takes. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month patrons. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Jason Bodor, David Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leong, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Kyle Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Raging Fellows, Rory Litwin, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Laura Reynolds, Paul Conway, Ellery Hensley, and Ian. Feeling left out? You can join Patreon at the link below, or show your support through Bitcoin, Kofi, or our cool swag store. Links are all below. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving!